My name's Sarah Gunn, as you know, and I'm going to um, give you a short presentation on my coaching philosophy. Um, I am the best success model of coaching that I know, because I have coached myself over the last year, having come on this course, and I really like the end result. So I want to share that with you and tell you how it's worked and why it's worked for me. So I'm going to use a lot of my personal experience to tell you about that. I'm going to tell you some of the lessons that I've learned and how I'd like to share them with other people as a coach. Um, my target for the people that I want to help through coaching are people who tell me that they're stressed out. Everybody's stressed out. They're stressed out with their relationship. They're stressed out with their time management. They're stressed out with their kids. They're stressed out with their work. We don't need to be stressed out. So that's the people that I want to help because it can have a terrible adverse effect on your health, your relationships, your life, your happiness, everything. Let's not be stressed out. Um, I've been, I don't know why I've done this. I thought everybody else, and I'm not sure if this is the word, has an ac acronym. It, there's lots of them in coaching anyway. So I thought I'd make up my own. And this is how I think you should go through the coaching process to get the best results. First of all, you have to create, it's called SACA, but I think I might need to revise that bit. Um, create space for yourself. Get to the point where you realise this isn't working and I don't want to do it anymore. Hopefully, you can get to the point a little bit earlier than when you're floating down the river, as Chris showed us. But first of all, you have to find that space to step back and go, hmm, I need to find a bit of space for myself and do something for myself here. Um, then you've got to change your consciousness, become aware, become aware of what is happening, why you're doing it, why you've been doing it, your limiting beliefs. Then you can get to a point where you realise you have a choice. And you have a choice how to perceive things and then how to act. Then you can apply it. And when you apply it, you can decide, does this work for me or does this not work for me? I'll tell you what, that way's not working for me. I'll try a different way. So that's my sort of summary of how I see coaching working as the process. So now we go on to the next bit. Uh, when we came on the course, I think one of the things we might have spoken about to start with was through break... Oh, no! Breakthrough through breakdown. I was going to put through breakdown comes breakthrough, but then I thought, no, I'm a positive person now, so I've put breakthrough through breakdown. I don't know if that works the right way around. Anyway, this is me a year ago. I was having a very, very wonky ride in that the wheel on my car had got completely out of sync. It was all wrong in one direction. It was all about work, all about work. If I could be a really good person at work, everything would be all right and I could disregard my relationship, my family, my friends, my social life. And that wasn't really very going very well because it's giving me a very wonky life ride. I had lots of miles of doing this. I'd been doing it for a long time and it had hurt for a long time, but I didn't really stop because I thought, mm, I don't need to stop, it'll be okay. You know, we'll carry on going. Just, it's still going, it's still going, carry on going. I didn't have much petrol left in my car because uh, I hadn't taken any time for myself and I had any energy for myself. I've been so focused on my work-related um, aims. My map was completely out of date. I was 46 and I was still using the same map that I'd used when I was 20 maybe. Or the map that my dad had given me that said, if you work hard, everything will be all right in your life. So I had the wrong map. Now anyone who met me, as you all did a year ago, knew that the sat nav had gone completely crazy. And if you talk to my two coaches that I had, which was Sally, uh, Sally well Sally particularly, but Mel, who I sat next to on the first week, said it was very tiring being with you. It was very tiring coaching you because your head was all over the place. The sat nav had gone like this and it didn't know where it was going. So that wasn't very good either. And I began to question why had I driven this car so hard that it had ended up like that because it actually wasn't doing me any good at all. 
So, as the first part of my velocity, what I needed to do was I needed to find some space for myself. And uh, this is the, um, one of the first things that Alan said to me on the first week. Perhaps we should think more about being, doing and having, which is from Shakti Gawain, mm -hmm. Creative Visualisation. Because most of us do our life doing, having, being. If we do this job, we'll have a nice home and a nice family. It will be lovely and everybody will love us. And we will be successful and happy. But for me, that way around wasn't working. And I wanted to go back to this being, doing, having model. I needed to find how to be, to start with. So this was part of my commitment to my self-change. To get to a point where I was thinking about myself and how I actually wanted to be just there, how I wanted to be. And um, although it doesn't seem to fit, there's, I, and I think it's from solution focused, when I worked with Sally, we visualised the goal of how I wanted to be. And it was peace and calm and centred and just to walk into my house and feel peaceful. Um, and also stop trying to control everything. So I don't know if you uh, used to watch the Moomin Mamas. Um, and I, this is what I was. I was a pink blob. Because the pink was love and it was in here. And it was, but it was going to mutate and not go, oh God, that's wrong. I can't control that. I've got to have a barrier there, 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 there. I'm just going to go with it a little bit. So I was a pink Moomin Mama. And I don't know if that works for you, but that, that worked for me as my visualization, my goal. Um, I'd say that I used the ontological um, approach pretty much in that I was very aware of how I was. Was I overexcited? Was I talking too fast? Uh, was my brain going all over the place? Uh, did I feel like that that day? You know, but whereas I wanted to feel the string on the top of my head. I wanted to stand up. I wanted to breathe calmly. I wanted to feel calm. So that was quite a good way of uh, becoming um, aware of how I felt. Um, existential approach was quite useful as well because there are a lot of what ifs, there are a lot of things that happen that actually you can't do anything about. And you might just have to say, I accept that, there's nothing I can do about it. And acceptance is as much... Um, People talk about change. Being able to accept is as important it has, is as important to me as being able to change. So that that was good. Uh, we we use person-centred um, psychology. We, you know a lot of positive feedback. Yeah, you're okay. Your your self-image, your self-worth, working on that um, to create a store of calmness and energy inside myself so that I could actually move forward with what I need to move forward with. And within that, I used uh, breathing techniques and meditation as well, and um, looked at Buddhist and Taoist, Taoist philosophy. Um, and I loved it. I read um, the Tao Pu book and got to the bit where it described woo, woo wee woo, no, woo wee woo wee, which means do without doing, just be. Just be for now, find that space, and then let's see what we can do. And then I was really excited the other day. I thought, oh, this isn't all just about rubbish that I've made up with my Saka thing. It's actually what Jung said about in the second half of your life, um, you come to a conscious rediscovery of self. And the actual process of the, the first half of your life is about ego differentiation, about your personality, developing your personality. Um, but then the second half is a conscious rediscovery of self. And the actual process of individuation is the conscious coming to terms with one, one's own inner centre, the psychic nucleus of self. And it generally begins with the wounding of the personality, which is what had happened to me. I'd sort of lost all credibility. My relationship had gone wrong, my job had gone wrong. The health had gone wrong, you know, and I, went, I was wounded, so I needed to get back to myself, which I was quite pleased when I 
read that, but uh, Jung thought that was a good idea as well. I thought, I'm not completely on the wrong track here. Right. So, oh, is this what we... Yeah, this is the next one, isn't it? So once I found that space for myself, um, I wanted to work on becoming conscious, becoming more aware. Why was all this happening? What was I thinking? What, what, what limiting beliefs did I have? Um, why was I telling myself this story? Because it wasn't working for me. So what was quite good for unlocking how I perceived the world was the narrative storytelling. And I actually told Sally my story. And when I finished telling it, we, we, I knew that I had a bloody victim mentality. And it was awful. Why am I going on like this? Um, that I, and to reframe that and to say, actually, no, a lot of that thing that's positive was very, very useful for me. And it was, it's a great way narrative because you get to know about people, you get to know about their, uh, you know, sort of like their background. You can then actually use the, um, what is it, transpersonal? No, the, what's it called? Psycho, you know, the psychodynamic psycho <laughs> model, once you've actually got them creating that rapport with you uh, for narrative. So that was very good. Um, the other key thing that really opened the door for me um, when looking at my relationship problems was the transactional analysis and looking at the parent-child-adult model and the Cartman Triangle. And it's amazing how um, just one phrase that somebody says to you, you know, can unlock a huge amount of, um, gosh, is that what I've been doing? unlock awareness and that's what coaching is about I think to help the person become aware to become conscious of what they're actually thinking and doing and the result that is having the action and the consequence um, and that there's a positive and negative to everything no, nothing is black and white it can be either way positive or negative and just these two things that there's a positive and negative to everything and there's an action and a consequence to everything just those two little things meant a great deal to me on my journey and then I guess this is leading on to the next bit really in that you have a choice if you don't like the cake stop baking the same one if you don't want to eat it it doesn't taste very nice and you're not getting what you want stop doing it you know what's the point so this is when we come to the next bit, the choice. And this is where I really like the cognitive behavioural approach. And that was another big thing when I read this, that you can separate thinking and feeling. Oh, wow. Like Lisa said, opens up a whole, whole new world to you. And then you can choose which route you take and which perspective you want to look at things from. And it's a great feeling. And I think that you can do that once you've created a space in your head to stop and do that. And then you can use the Socratic questioning on yourself. Well, is it helpful? Is it logical? Is it correct or is it realistic? You know, all those things that Chris was saying about the, 